Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. Today I want to talk about reverbs. I have a very cool trick for you guys in store that is going to ensure that your reverbs stay a little bit cleaner. I also want to talk about my general philosophy when it comes to reverbs, when, um, like how do I apply reverbs, when do I decide to apply reverbs and all that kind of stuff. Hey guys, I quickly wanted to say that my second masterclass is out now on my Gumroad. It's about 24 hours of edited footage of me making the track that you're listening to right now. So go check it out if you're interested. So this is the project that we'll be working in. You might recall it from some of the last videos that I've been doing. This is the one that also talked about the delay. And what I've been doing recently in this production is adding in some reverbs. And the way that I've been doing that is almost always through a dry wet rack. So here you can see I have an audio effect rack and this has my reverb on it as well as a dry signal. So essentially what we're doing is we're splitting up the signal into two parts and then just one gets a reverb fully wet and the other one gets the dry signal. So essentially this is the same thing as setting up this M turbo verb with a dry wet of 50% because then it would be an equal split between dry and wet signal. But the difference is that now we can process this wet signal because we have it on its own chain. Because this is fully wet, 100% wet, we can apply effects to it, like for example this compressor. So what this compressor does is it just side chains the reverb to the original sound. And I think this is a trick that most of you guys probably know, you've heard it in passing because it's a fairly common trick in music production, but you might not be aware of where you would want to use a trick like this as opposed to just a normal reverb. So for me personally, I use all of these reverbs with a sidechain compressor on individual short sounds. So for example, this sound has a delay tail that is just going to go out here. And therefore here I want also some reverb on it, but I don't want it to be too drowned out when the sound itself is actually playing. If I play it without the compressor, you can hear that the reverb slightly overwhelms the sound itself. You can hear that with the sidechain compressor enabled, you just get a little bit of extra clarity when the sound itself is playing. So this just takes input from the dry channel. And what is nice to note here is that what I'd like to do is I like to have my reverbs after my delays so that the delay tail also gets some reverb on it. But this means that the compression also reacts to that delay tail. Now, naturally a delay tail is just a few dB lower in volume than the actual sound itself. You're filtering out most of the time and often you just have a dry wet which isn't exactly 50-50. Like is the case in this patch as well, which I went over in a previous video that I did, which is a fairly complex patch, but you can assure me that there's some filtering happening and that the volume of the delay tail gets lowered. Even though it says 100% feedback here, we're actually using a dB readout to control the volume of the actual delay. So as I said, the delay tail also influences the loudness of the reverb due to the compression still acting a little bit on it. And you can see that as well. You can see that it doesn't instantly snap to zero after the delay tail kind of starts playing and the sound itself stops. The disc loses the reverb into the delay tail and I think that this is a very nice sound. You can definitely overdo it and make the sound itself and the first parts of the delay tail sound too dry. But overall it's a nice effect where it sounds like it becomes a little bit wetter when the delay tail is kind of going down in volume, because essentially it is. Now some of the other things that you can do with this technique, with this simple method of just putting your reverbs on its own separate track, is that you can filter them out. So here for example, I'm using this EQ to just remove some of the rumble frequencies that I don't want for my reverb. In this case, I'm using black hole. Now when it comes to things like sequences, I don't tend to use these kind of reverbs. When it comes to sequences, if I were to add a reverb, I would just add it to the track because it's always playing. So there's no point in having it kind of duck to the dry signal because the signal is always playing. So at the end of the day, that would just be like a volume control. For this particular sound, I decided to put it in the patch. Other times I might decide to put it later in the chain if I have a dedicated reverb that I want to kind of get the sound from. It kind of depends on whether this reverb tends to work or not. For most of the sounds, it doesn't really work. So I tend to just use reverb plugins instead. But every once in a while, you'll have a patch where it sounds really nice on there and then you'll just keep it. Here's another case in which I'm just using a reverb as an insert, like you can see right here. This is Cloud Seath, also a nice reverb. It's very useful for very long reverbs, but overall it's a very nice sound. And it sits on this atmosphere here. 
Now in this case, I didn't want any of the effects of the sound kind of being drier when the sound itself is playing and the reverb coming in later. I just wanted this to wash in reverb, so that's why I chose not to actually compress it to the original sound. Now the final thing that I want to tackle is return tracks, why I don't use them. I like to adapt every single reverb exactly to the sounds that is playing on it. And the whole point of a return track is that you sum multiple tracks into one and then add reverb on top of that. And I know that there are some benefits in the sense that every reverb sounds the same and you're going to have more of a cohesive feeling as well as the fact that you're saving a ton of CPU cycles because you're just using one plugin on a sum of different tracks. But to me, you lose that sense of customability, which is just that one knob of how much reverb do you want. Personally, I like to have a little bit more control over the tone of each of the reverbs, the length of each of the reverbs, and just have them different from each other. So that's everything that I wanted to talk about and that I wanted to share in regards to reverbs. If you have any other topic that you would like me to cover or any other suggestions that you have for the channel, then please let me know. You can leave a comment in the comment section down below or you can go into my Discord and become a member there and then chat to me. Now, if you're new here and you want to see more of the things that I do on this channel, then make sure that you're subscribed and you can turn on the bell notifications to get notified by YouTube whenever I upload something. But this is going to be the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.